your hands as it comes to even share your word. May your spirit and your anointing rest upon his life. We thank you and we bless you. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Elder John to come and share the word with us. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good and all the time. Yes, and that is his nature. We really thank him so much once again this particular day for bringing us into his house, into his presence, that we might worship him, that we might adore his holy name. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. He has created us even for his own pleasure. He has created us that we might worship him, that we might praise him, that we might magnify uh, his holy name. As our children were ministering here, uh, uh, the word of God was just coming in Psalms uh, 8, verse 2. Psalms 8, uh, verse 2. The Lord was reminding me there. The Bible says that out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger out of the mouth of babes and suckling has thou ordained strength. Other versions say he has ordained uh, praise because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Praise be to God. Uh, in the message, uh, the message uh, a translation, the Bible says nursing infants gago uh, choruses about you. Toddlers shout the songs that drown the enemy talk and silence the atheist babble. So you can imagine how powerful uh, the praise, even coming forth from our young ones, can do. It's able to drown out even the enemy talk and silence the atheist babble. Praise be to God. So as you see our children here ministering to the Lord, they are also waging warfare. Even at the same time, they are also or are waging warfare because out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength. You might see maybe like they are singing softly, but they are in great warfare here. They are also declaring, even declaring the, the oracles of the Lord, even because of thine enemies, that thou might steal the enemy. Through their praises, they are able to steal the enemy and they are able also to, uh, to, uh, to steal the avenger and also to silence every atheist and everything that comes against uh, the things of God. So what they are doing here, they are praising uh, powerfully, just like we were doing here, uh, we were doing here earlier. Uh, uh, as much as we were worshiping the Lord, we were also waging warfare and fighting and bringing down uh, the strongholds uh, of the enemy. So when you have that time, that chance that God has given you, just praise him with all, all of your heart because there are great things that are happening uh, in the spiritual realm. It's such a wonderful thing. As we lift him up, uh, his presence comes down and for sure no sickness, no enemy, no nothing can stand at the presence, at the presence of God. So what a wonderful session, what a wonderful time that we, we are coming from, in the, uh, from the presence of the Lord, even to worship him and to bless uh, his holy name. Praise be to God. So our topic today we, uh, is uh, uh, in uh, Isaiah 61 verse 3, uh, and that is beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes in Isaiah 61 verse 3. Uh, that's where we shall revolve around. And also, uh, we can also say uh, the great exchange that happened at the cross of Calvary. What happened right there at the cross of Calvary through the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we just want to uh, be quickened and to be enlightened even by what Jesus Christ did for us right there at the cross of Calvary. And there is no enemy that is supposed to bring you down. No enemy is supposed to discourage you because Jesus did it all and Jesus said it is finished. And once he said it is finished, it is in every area of our lives. He defeated the enemy once, uh, once and for all. Isaiah 61 uh, verse 3, the Bible says, And to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. That is exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. As you uh, begin there, we can even begin uh, in uh, 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 verse 1 there. 
uh, Isaiah 61, verse 1, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of, uh, of the prison, even to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil for joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. That is the mission that Jesus Christ came to do. And I believe he has given, it, he has given uh, this uh, mission also to the body of Christ, even to continue with it by his uh, Holy Spirit. This is also what we can also call the great exchange that happened right there at the cross uh, of Calvary. When Jesus Christ was dying there uh, on the cross of Calvary, he was taking all our defeat. He was taking all our ashes, all our mourning, all our pains right there, and he was giving us uh, his victory. So the Lord Jesus Christ has taken all our ashes. Everything that were, uh, was against us or had been declared, even against us, had been written against us, even by the enemy, the Lord Jesus Christ took it and nailed it right there on the cross of Calvary. So none of us should be discouraged. None of us uh, should be defeated because Jesus Christ himself has said uh, very clearly there, it is finished. When he was dying on the cross, he said, it is, it is finished. It is finished even right there as he gave us the victory even right there uh, when he was dying on, uh, on the cross. He has come even to set the captives free to release even the, the prisoners, those that are bound by the enemy. Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, he has come to set the captives, uh, the captives free, to declare even the acceptable ear of the Lord, the ear of God's uh, uh, favor, to comfort all that mourn. Have you been mourning even because of one uh, reason or the other? Jesus Christ has already come even to comfort you, even to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give, them, uh, to give unto them beauty for ashes. So it doesn't matter how people look at you, Jesus Christ has already given you his beauty. He has already clothed you with, uh, with his presence. Just like uh, Galatians, um, I believe it's Galatians uh, 2.27, uh, that says that we have put on, we have put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, we are not uh, the way maybe uh, people uh, maybe uh, uh, look at us, but we are the, the, the way the Lord Jesus Christ has ordained uh, that we should be, that ha has ordained that we should be. We have put on the Lord, uh, the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is uh, in uh, Galatians, Galatians 3, Galatians 3, uh, 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. For as many as, of, uh, as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on uh, Christ. Right now, for the believers, for all those who are confessing Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, have already been baptized into Christ, and they have put on Christ. So once you have put on Christ, then uh, all those ashes, all those uh, defeats, all those mornings have been removed, even out of, out of our lives. And Jesus Christ has given us, uh, he has given us uh, his victory. So right there at Calvary, there was every perfect, um, we can say that uh, uh, the work of Calvary was perfect in every aspect, and it was also perfect in every respect. It was a great exchange that took place right there at the cross of Calvary. And the Lord himself has given us beauty for ashes. So right now, nobody uh, should just uh, maybe weigh you down or the enemy condemn you. Jesus Christ already has given you, has given each and every one of us uh, that uh, victory. Praise uh, be to God. So what happened at the death of Jesus Christ on the cross? We shall continue digging deeper even in the word of God and we can see the kind of beauty that Jesus Christ gave us, gave you, gave each and every one of us when he was dying there on the cross of Calvary. So on the cross, a divinely ordained exchange 
took place. Just as we are seeing in the word of God, he has given us beauty, beauty for, uh, for ashes. He has also given us the oil of joy, even for mourning. Have you been mourning? Uh, even because of one uh, reason or the other, Jesus Christ has given us his joy. He gave us his joy right there at the cross of Calvary. So let every uh, let, 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 let us, uh, know that uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. His joy is our strength because of what he has accomplished for each and every one of us. He has given us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That is another great exchange that took place at the cross of Calvary. He gave us that garment of praise, even for the uh, spirit of heaviness. And that's why even when you come to the house of the Lord, when you come to worship the Lord, put away that garment of heaviness. You might be feeling heavy and put on the garment of praise because the Lord Jesus Christ has already given each and every one of us that garment of praise. We should not allow uh, ourselves to be defeated even as we are coming to pray, even as we are coming to praise the name of the Lord our God, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. He has done all that even for, for his own uh, glory. So upon all humanity, uh, uh, all evil, that is all evil, was to be visited upon all humanity, or all evil that was to be visited upon all humanity was visited to the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Right there, when he was on the cross, remember you and I were the ones who were supposed to be nailed. Jesus Christ had not sinned. He was without sin. It's you and I that sinned right there from the Garden of Eden. It's us who rebelled against the Lord. It's us who are supposed to go to the cross. It is us who are supposed to be nailed there. But Jesus Christ came and gave us that great exchange when he went to the cross of Calvary. And right there, every evil that was uh, supposed to be visited uh, to, uh, upon all humanity was visited uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. All evil due to us came upon Jesus Christ so that all the good due to Jesus might be available uh, to us. So there again, we see the great exchange. He gave us his goodness right there and he took all the evil that was uh, supposed to be on, upon us. We were the ones who were supposed to be condemned. We were the ones who were supposed to be uh, uh, destroyed even because of sin. But Jesus Christ gave us that great exchange on the cross uh, of Calvary. Uh, God prepared and also planned all this before the foundations of the world. Your salvation and my salvation was prepared by God, even because of his mercies that endure forever, right there before the foundations of the world. So you can imagine the kind of love that God loves you, the kind of love that God loves each and every one of us. It's the enemy that comes even to whisper to us, uh, maybe uh, we don't have this, we don't have the other, maybe God has forgotten us, but he has not forgotten us. The kind of sacrifice that Jesus did for us on the cross tells you that for sure God gave us his best. He gave us his, his all. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should uh, uh, believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. Praise be to God. Uh, in Isaiah 53 verse 6, we also see there uh, the great atonement that God gave uh, to each and every one of us. Isaiah 53, right there, we also see uh, Jesus Christ giving us his beauty even for, uh, for ashes uh, right there. In verse 6, uh, Isaiah 53 verse 6, the famous uh, verse uh, or the scripture uh, that we always quote, uh, verse 6 there, the Bible says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone unto his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So the right there, the word of God again is reminding us that we all went astray even because of sin. Because of what we did right there at the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, we all are in line of that generation, and we have all sinned against God, and we have turned every one of us on his own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we can say this is also the central verse, or the main verse that talks of atonement, the atonement that Jesus Christ gave us. He took away all our sins, all our iniquity, all our guilt, and he gave us his life. 
And right there we see his beauty, giving us his beauty uh, even for, for ashes. So the Lord has laid on him, that is on Jesus, the iniquity, the iniquity of us all. And remember what the Bible says uh, 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 in Romans, Romans, I uh, believe, uh, 6, uh, 6 3, that uh, uh, all have sinned and fallen short of, no, the wages of sin, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is, is death. So you and I were supposed to die. You and I were supposed to be nailed, actually, even on that cross of Calvary. But Jesus Christ himself has come and, uh, and uh, given us his life. God gave us Jesus. He took away all our iniquity. In other words, he also took uh, away our guilt, our iniquity, and also our rebellion. And he gave us his great exchange, even of the salvation that he has given us. So the universal guilt of all humanity is that uh, we have turned everyone into his own way. In other words, we have rebelled against God. But thank God for Jesus because he has come and he has had mercy on each and every one of us. Praise be to God. So the mercy of God upon the human race is when Jesus hung on the cross. So when we see Jesus Christ hanging on that cross of Calvary, then there we see the mercies of God upon all humanity. And God visited on Jesus the iniquity, the guilt, the rebellion of us all. And all its consequences that we might be free even from all those evils. All those consequences that were there as a result of rebellion were laid upon Jesus Christ. And right there, he gave us his great exchange. He gave, he gave us his great exchange. He gave us his beauty, even for ashes. He gave us his life and many other things that we shall see, even as we continue uh, looking at the word, uh, the word of God. So there are eight aspects of the great exchange uh, that happened right there at the cross of Calvary. There are those eight aspects where there was a great exchange or where he gave us the beauty, <laughs> that beauty uh, for ashes. Uh, the evil, uh, that, that is the evil that came upon Jesus so that uh, all good may be available uh, to us. Again, it is all there. Uh, those eight aspects are, all, are there in Isaiah uh, 53. 53. Uh, if you read from uh, 53, uh, from th uh, verse 3 there, even to 10, they are all uh, mentioned, uh, mentioned there, but we shall be looking at them. Uh, in Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, uh, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, the Bible says, Surely he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrows. Yet you did esteem, esteem him, stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. So you can see there, right near uh, several exchanges, even taking place there. He has taken our griefs. He has given us his joy. He has taken us, he has taken even our sorrows, even right there. Yet did, did we think that he was stricken and smitten of God? He was wounded, even for our transgression. Yeah? Right there we see uh, Jesus Christ again being wounded and also giving us his healing, as his healing right there. So um, in the physical... We can say that Jesus was punished for our iniquities. Right there on the cross of Calvary, the number one aspect or the number one thing that was happening there is that on the physical side is that Jesus literally was punished for our iniquities so that we might be forgiven. On the spiritual part, we were forgiven. When he was punished for iniquities, on the other hand, we were forgiven. Hence, we have peace with God. So that's one of the great exchanges that happened right there on the cross, uh, on the cross of Calvary. There are great things that were happening there, right there on the cross of Calvary. The other aspect is that uh, Jesus was wounded, just as uh, we are reading here uh, from the word, uh, the word of God. He was wounded right there. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded that we might be healed. 
by his stripes. When they were beating him right there, the 39 stripes, uh, as Jesus Christ was being beaten, then on the other hand, the spiritual part, we were receiving healing. And that's why we need to claim that healing because it is in the will of God for you and I to walk in that divine healing. Jesus took away all our sicknesses and as he was being beaten, he was also giving us that exchange of receiving uh, his healing. Praise be to God. Uh, some of the verses that talk about that is in Matthew, uh, Matthew 8, 16, uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 8, uh, Matthew 8, uh, Matthew 8, 6, uh, 16, uh, Matthew 8, 16 and 17, the Bible says, when the evening, the evening or the evening was come, they brought unto him, uh, unto him many that were possessed, uh, many that were po uh, possessed with the devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word. And healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So Jesus Christ Himself, there, it's uh, uh, being confirmed of what uh, Isaiah said, that He Himself took our inf inf uh, infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So on one hand, He was wounded, on the other hand, we received uh, His uh, healing. Praise be to God. First Peter uh, 2.24 also talked about, uh, talks about the same thing. First Peter uh, 2.24. Uh, uh, 2 uh, First Peter 2.24. Uh, the Bible says that uh, who, uh, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. So by whose stripes we were healed. So on that cross, on that tree of Calvary, he was wounded that we might be healed, that we might receive that uh, healing uh, that God has given each and every one of us. So on the other hand, on the cross of Calvary, the other point, you can say maybe point number three, is that Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness. Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness. On the other hand, that we might be made righteous with his righteousness, that we might be made righteous with his uh, uh, righteousness. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 21. 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 21. 2 Corinthians uh, 5, 21, the Bible says, For he has made him to be seen for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For he has made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness, of, the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus Christ himself was made sin for you and I. He was made sin at the cross of Calvary. Remember, he was sinless. He was without sin, but he was made sin for you and I so that you may receive the righteousness of uh, of God in him. That was a great exchange. That was beauty uh, that he gave us, even for ashes, even uh, right there on the cross of Calvary. So Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might be made the, righteous, uh, the righteousness, uh, made righteous with his righteousness. So he took away, he took our iniquities and right there he gave us his righteousness. So it's not about our righteousness. We are not accepted because of our righteousness. Remember Isaiah says that our righteousness is us filthy rags even before the Lord. You cannot come with our own righteousness. It's not, it cannot be accepted in the sight of the Lord. It is only by that work of the cross. By what Jesus Christ did right there for you and for each and every one of us on the cross of Calvary. That's where we received that a great, a great, a great, a great exchange. So we receive his righteousness by faith and we can do nothing to earn it. It is freely given to us. That righteousness, even the one that we say that we, we have, we are born again, it has been given to us by the grace of God. Literally, Jesus Christ took away our iniquities and he gave us his own, uh, his own uh, righteousness. He gave us his own, uh, his own uh, righteousness. So the other thing that happened there is that uh, Jesus tasted death for us. Jesus himself tasted death 
for us that we might share his life. That we might share his life. That's why for all those who are in Christ Jesus, they shall not die. They shall live again. Remember what um, Jesus Christ was telling uh, Martha, uh, Martha and, uh, and, and Mary that uh, yes, though Lazarus was dead, they should not be afraid. He shall live. Uh, he shall live again. He shall. He shall live. Uh, he shall live again. Uh, he shall live. He shall live. Uh, he shall live again. Is, in, uh, is it in John or Matthew? Let me see. If you get it uh, before me, you can just. Uh, the story of uh, Martha and. Uh, Martha, Martha and Mary and uh, their brother, brother Lazarus. It is in John, John 11, yeah? John chapter, uh, chapter 11. John uh, chapter 11, 25. John 11, 25. The Bible says, Jesus said unto her, that is, uh, we can start uh, from verse 23. Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Mother said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto, unto her, I am the, res the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So that's the kind of life that Jesus Christ has given each and every one of us. Right there at the cross of Calvary, he tasted death for us that we might share in his life. And that's why for all those who are in Christ, they shall never die. In fact, uh, the Bible says that we only sleep. We only sleep when the trumpet uh, shall sound. Then we shall just awake. Even from our sleep, we shall rise again and be joined uh, together with the Lord in the air. And right there, we shall live with him uh, forevermore. Praise be to God. So the other thing that happened right there, the great exchange that happened right there, the other uh, beauty that we were given there, even for ashes, is that Jesus was made a curse. You remember in Galatians 3, 13, 14, we shared uh, the other time that Jesus became a curse for you and I, that we might receive the blessing. So right there on the cross, again, we see Jesus Christ uh, uh, be becoming a curse for you and I, for each and every one of us, that we might receive uh, receive the blessing. Galatians 3.13 uh, the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us for it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise uh, uh, of the spirit even through faith. So right there, uh, we received that beauty of that curse being broken, Jesus Christ being made a curse for each and every one of us, that we might receive that Abrahamic blessing uh, upon our lives. Praise uh, be to God. So the other thing is that uh, on the cross, Jesus on the cross endured uh, our poverty. That is, he endured our poverty or took our poverty. He was stripped naked with nothing. He was stripped naked right there with nothing. And he took away, away our poverty right there on the cross that we might share his wealth and abundance. That we might share his wealth and abundance. So let uh, those, the poor, say that, that I am rich, even because of what the Lord has done for each and every one of us. In uh, Second uh, Corinthians 8, 9, uh, Second Corinthians... Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 8, 9. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. The Bible says, For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be made rich. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. That he through his poverty might be made rich. This, this all happened at the cross of Calvary. 
he was taking our poverty right there, nailing it on his cross so that he may give us his riches. Remember, he's the creator of the universe. He is God and he owns everything. Yet he came there and became poor for you, became poor for you. He gave you that great exchange that you might receive his abundance and also uh, his wealth. Second Corinthians, again, eight, uh, no, no, 9, 8. Uh, the next ch chapter after that, uh, Second Corinthians uh, 9, 8. Uh, the Bible says that, uh, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that he always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that he always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. That's the grace that we received right there on the cross of Calvary. So he became poor for you so that you might receive his abundance. Jesus Christ endured poverty right there that you might uh, 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 receive his abundance or share in his wealth. All this was happening right there and we can say it is the beauty that Jesus was giving us in exchange of the ashes that were upon us even because of how we had sinned against the Lord. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Yes, right there also in uh, Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47 and 48. We see again the kind of poverty that was upon us. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, uh, 47 and 48. And why that kind of poverty came even upon us? The Bible says, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, as the one, one kind of poverty that was there, or the, as a result of not serving God with gladness, with hunger, with thirst, with, uh, and in nakedness, and in want, or in lack of all things, that he shall put a yoke of iron even upon thy neck until ye have been destroyed. So you can see it's very, very serious. Not serving the Lord with joyfulness. Not serving the Lord with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So right there again, that's the kind of poverty that Jesus Christ took away that was upon us. Took away and nailed it on his cross. And that is, uh, once again, the hunger the fast, the nakedness, or the lack, or the want, or the need of all things. We can say it is a great kind of poverty that was laid upon us, even because of sin. And right there, Jesus Christ took it and nailed it on the cross of Calvary. Praise be to God. So Jesus on the cross was hungry. He had not eaten for the last 24 hours. That's the one kind of poverty that you have mentioned there. The hunger that is there in Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. The hunger. Jesus Christ, when he was on the cross, he became hungry for you and I. For 24 hours, he had not eaten. Meaning now he was taking your hunger. He was taking that kind of poverty, nailing, nailing it on the cross. Nailing it on the cross so that you might receive the abundance of all things. Right there on the cross, he was also thirsty. The other kind of poverty, he was also thirsty. He took away your thirst. He took away that kind of poverty on the cross when he said, I thirst. Remember Jesus Christ said, I thirst when he was dying on the cross of Calvary. The other uh, kind of poverty he took uh, is our nakedness. When he was stripped, naked even without his clothes. It was a great shame uh, that took place on our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's also another kind of poverty that took place right there when he gave us uh, in exchange of his abundance. So he was in need of everything when he was hanging on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ was in need of everything at that particular time. Though he was God, though he was the son of God, right there he was also in need. Remember, he was buried with a borrowed uh, robe. That is great luck yeah, that came upon our Lord Jesus Christ. He was buried with a borrowed robe. He was also buried in a borrowed, a borrowed tomb, yeah, that one of um, uh, Matthias, yeah, it was a borrowed tomb, meaning he was in great poverty right there when he was hanging on the cross of Calvary, 
and he gave us right there his ex a great exchange of his wealth and also his abundance. So there are many things that happened on the cross of Calvary. Not only were our sins forgiven, there was that great exchange that we might, we might live a victorious Christian life on our day-to-day -day living. Praise be to God. And I believe at this point we need to give the Lord a wonderful hand clap even because of what he did for us. We need to give him a wonderful hand clap for that which he has done for you and I. Remember, we are the ones who are supposed to die and to be nailed on that cross of Calvary. Jesus had not sinned at all, but he just gave himself freely that you might be set free. He whom the Son sets free is totally uh, free indeed. So Jesus exhausted the poverty and also the curse on the cross that we might receive the abundance of all things. Just as you have seen there in Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48. He took that poverty, became so poor on that cross that you and I might become, uh, might become rich. The other thing that happened there on the cross is that Jesus endured our shame. Yes, he endured our shame that we might share his glory, that we might share on his glory. He endured our shame right there on the cross of Calvary. Remember, he was stripped naked, uh, left without uh, clothes right there. It was a great shame that he took because of you and I. Remember, he gave his life. No one would have taken the life of Jesus. He gave it himself for each and every one of us. You remember at one time he was telling uh, the disciples that he would even call the region of angels even to come and rescue him right there at the garden of uh, uh, Gethsemane when the soldiers were coming to take him. He would have called his father and he would have sent even angels to come and rescue him. Remember, he had all uh, uh, power. But at that particular time, he came and became you and I. He suffered uh, yet without sin so that he may take away your shame. He may take away all these things that we are seeing, nailing them and giving you his victory uh, even right there. So Jesus endured our shame that we might share uh, in his glory. Matthew 27, 35. Uh, Matthew uh, Matthew 27, and Matthew 27, Matthew 27, uh, 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 35 and 36, the Bible says, and they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there. And sitting down, they watched him there. So everybody was watching him as they were passing by there when he was stripped of everything. He was stripped of all his clothes. That was a great shame that took place on our Lord Jesus Christ. Just for this one reason, that he might give you his glory, that you might share or he might clothe you with his glory. What a mighty and a merciful God, a merciful God we serve. So uh, the other thing that took place right there is that Jesus endured our rejection. Jesus endured our rejection that we might have his acceptance. Jesus endured our rejection that we might have his acceptance. I believe those are eight points. And uh, as you go to Ephesians, uh, Matthew, we can also go to the same Matthew uh, 27, uh, 46. Matthew 27, 46, just uh, where we are, a few verses from there. Matthew 27, 46, the Bible says, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabakithani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So right there on the cross, Jesus was being rejected, actually was forsaken by the Father, even because of you and I. Jesus himself also felt really forsaken at this point, even by, by his father, who is also our father. In other words, he was rejected right there on the cross or even forsaken so that you might receive his acceptance. Today, you and I have been accepted. We are accepted in the beloved. Praise be to God. In Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 1, uh, 1, 6. Ephesians, Ephesians 1, 6. Ephesians, Ephesians 1.6 uh, says, to the praise, uh, to the praise, 
We can start from uh, verse 3. Blessed be the Lord, the Lord, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. So the Lord right there has made us accepted in the beloved. So when he was being rejected there, he was giving us his acceptance. So nobody should tell you or will try to reject you or you should not even feel rejected because Jesus Christ was rejected even because of your sake. Yes, there are those situations uh, that we go through on our day-to-day -day lives and we feel rejected, literally when we are rejected, but we should claim our acceptance, the acceptance that Jesus Christ gave us right there on the cross of Calvary. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Yes, so we just want to stand and uh, just claim these scriptures, claim those promises, claim that great exchange that took place at the cross of Calvary by literally confessing and claiming. If maybe you feel uh, rejected in one way or the other, claim the acceptance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you might feel uh, ashamed or maybe you might be going through one shame or the other. Claim his glory because he has already given you that glory. He has given, literally given you that glory on his cross. You might feel maybe you are undergoing maybe a certain kind of poverty uh, in your life. Claim his wealth because he took away all your poverty and he gave you his abundance. He gave you his wealth on the cross of Calvary. The other day we were, uh, uh, we were, we were, we were renouncing and denouncing any curse that may be upon our lives that you might claim the Abrahamic blessing uh, in our lives. Uh, Jesus tasted death for us that we might share on his life. And our confession is, we shall not die, but we shall live to declare the works uh, of the Lord. Jesus Christ has died for us. We cannot uh, allow ourselves just to, to die because we are sharing in his life. With long life, he leads us fires and also show us his salvation. He has taken up our sin and he has given us his righteousness. He has been wounded. Might you be not, may be feeling unwell. Remember, Jesus Christ has been wounded because of you. And he has given you his health at this very moment of time. He has been punished even for our iniquities so that we might, we might receive uh, his blessings. No, he's... Uh, has been punished for our, uh, for our uh, iniquities so that we may be forgiven. So that we may be forgiven and so that we may receive his forgiveness even at this very moment of time. So we just want to stand and just confess uh, in that line and uh, 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 prayerfully, prayerfully as we claim that which Jesus Christ has done for us. Remember in Hebrews 3.1, Hebrews 3.1, the Bible says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, Consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession or our confession, Jesus Christ. So that which you confess uh, uh, is that is what you, you receive. Not only here, even after the service, even uh, when you go home, continue claiming your healing. Continue claiming even your acceptance. Continue claiming your abundance. Those things that Jesus did, did for us as he gave us his beauty, even for ashes right there on the cross of Calvary. So we shall repeat this, uh, that uh, you want to confess seated. I think standing is a better position. Yes, so Jesus was punished for my iniquities. You just confess like you believe it. Jesus was punished for my iniquities that I might be forgiven. Jesus was wounded that I might be healed. Jesus was made sin for my sinfulness that I might be made righteous. Jesus tasted death for me, that I might share his life. Jesus was made a curse, that I might receive the blessing. Jesus on the cross endured poverty, 
that I might share his abundance. Jesus on the cross endured my shame that I might share his glory. Jesus endured my rejection that I might receive his acceptance. So just take some time and thank him and praise him for the great work that he did for you. He did for each and every one of us on the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you. We bless you, Lord. Father, we adore your holy name. We thank you, my Father, for the great exchange that you did for each and every one of us, my Father, the cross of Calvary. We don't take it for granted, O oh Jehovah God, for this great salvation, Father, that you have given each and every one of us, my Father. Beauty even for ashes, O oh Jehovah God, that today, Father, we are accepted in the beloved. How we thank you, Lord, and how we bless you, how we worship you. Thank you for what you did for us, O oh Jehovah God. We want to praise you, my Father. We adore you, my Father. We glorify your name, O oh God. We were the ones that Father who would have died, my Father, right there on that cross, O oh God. But you took the place for each and every one of us, O oh Jehovah God. You died even for us, my Father, that we might live, O oh Jehovah God. We thank you for this great mercy that you showed us, O oh Jehovah God. Thank you, Father, for giving us Jesus, O oh God, even to die for us on the cross of Calvary, Almighty Father, how we thank you and how we bless you, how we worship you, O oh God. We adore your holy name, O King of the glory. You have given us your health, O oh Jehovah God. Beauty for ashes, O oh Jehovah God. All for joy, even for mourning, O oh Jehovah God. That it might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting even of the Lord, even at this very moment of time, O oh Jehovah God. Thank you for giving us, my Father, beauty even for ashes, O oh Jehovah God. You are wounded, my Father, for our transgressions, O oh Jehovah God. You are bruised for our iniquities, my Father. The chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes Jesus we have been totally healed even this very afternoon how we thank you for this great exchange oh Jehovah God this great exchange father at the cross of Calvary almighty father thank you for the insight even of your word oh Jehovah God that my father we can understand we can see oh God that which you did for us my father we are forever grateful oh God we are forever grateful my father you became poor that we might become rich oh Jehovah God you took away every negative thing in our lives oh God and you gave us all the positive things. Father, how we thank you and how we bless you. We adore you, O Jehovah God. We give you a mighty hand clap in this place, Father, for you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be exalted, O God. You are worthy of all the adoration. Father, how we thank you and how we worship you. Hallelujah. As we continue in prayer, are you there? Maybe you are not born again. You have not received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes, you have a chance even to receive what Jesus Christ did for you and I at the cross of Calvary. So if you are there, maybe you are not born again, you can wave your hand and we are going to, I'm going to sit from here. We are going to pray together and you shall receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Are you there? Maybe you are backslidden and you want to return to the Lord. You can see what Jesus has done for you, what Jesus has done for us. We were the ones who were condemned uh, to death. We were the ones who were supposed to die at the place of Jesus, but Jesus took our place. So if you are there, you don't have to perish. You don't have to perish. This chance is there. You can always come to Christ and he's going to save you and he's going to set you free. So if you are there, you can wave your hand and we are going to sit from here. Praise be to God. So if you are not there, we thank God, Father, we bless you and we worship you. We glorify your name, O oh God, and we want to magnify your holy name. Thank you once again, Lord, for that which you have done for us, my Father. We bless you, Lord, and we give you a mighty hand clap in this place for you are worthy to be praised, Father. You are worthy to be exalted. Father, you are worthy of all the adoration. We bless you, Lord, and we magnify your name. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we have prayed and believed. Amen.